snap tight assembly system locks end channels to wall sheets without the need for tools or fasteners. To assemble each panel, the perimeter channels are secured to the top and bottom of each sheet. Gently tap the channel over the snap tight lugs and work your way along the sheet. Each channel should be fit to the center of each sheet. Simply tap the channel along until it's aligned. We're going to join our splice channels now. Basically, we're just joining a pair of channels together to make a longer one. There are three parts, a left channel, a right channel, and the joiner. Looking at the part numbers, you'll see that the left channel has the letter L and the right channel has the letter R at the end of the part number. There are also printed arrows pointing to the end of the channel that needs to be joined. The joiner, called a CSJ, needs to be put in the right way to match the channel. Make sure that you've got the long sides matched up. Place the CSJ centered on the end and press in as shown until you hear it click. Repeat this with the other side and then make sure that both halves are butted up against one another. Do this for the rest of the splice channels in the pack before beginning construction. Let's assemble our ridge beam. To make the 3 meter long ridge beam we'll need the left piece, a 97 ALR, the right piece, which is another 97 ALR, the joiner, which is a ZASP, and 8 tech screws with neoprene washers. The first step is to remove the protective film that covers the capping of the ridge beam pieces. Take both ridge beam pieces and make sure you have them orientated the way shown and then turn them over. Slide the capping of one under the other and then push them together until the hat sections are flush. Place the ZASP into the underside making sure that it's centered. Then turn the beam back over. We need to fix both halves of the beam to the ZASP using eight tech screws. Make a mark 10mm from the top cap as shown. Then make three more marks 50mm apart. Then mark the four on the other side. That's all eight. Now get the tech screws with the neoprene washers. Be careful not to over tighten and break the washer like this. Secure both halves of the splice ridge beam to the ZASP with eight tech screws with neoprene washers. Let's get started with the rear panel. To construct the rear panel we're going to need 155B channel, 181B channel, two 30A sheets and two of the 31A sheets. Lay out your sheets so that the two 31A sheets are on the inside and the two 30A sheets are on the outside. Overlap the sheets so that they sit flush top and bottom and the pre-punched holes along the edges are aligned. Once aligned, use 9 of the 10mm self-tapping screws to fasten all the sheets together. Now that your screws are in, take the 55B channel and attach it to the top of the sheets using the snap type method. The channel will need to have the short side facing towards the outside of the panel. Use two of the 10mm self tapping screws to secure the channel and the CSJ.
Repeat the process for the channel 81B, attaching it to the bottom of our sheets. Use two of the 10mm self-tapping screws to secure the channel and the CSJ. This completes the rear wall assembly. Let's do the roof panel assembly. To make the roof panel, we're going to need two of the 87A lips, one 60A channel, one 81A channel, and four of the 45A sheets. Lay out the four sheets and overlap them by one rib. Ensure that the pre-punched holes are aligned. Use 12 of the 10mm self-tapping screws to secure the four sheets together. We're going to attach the 60A channel to the top of our joined sheets using the snap type method. Don't forget to keep the short edge of the channel facing towards the outside. Get the 81A channel and repeat the process for the bottom sheets using the snap type method. Fasten the channel and the CSJ with two of the 10mm self-tapping screws in the underside of the channel. We'll attach the lips now. Get one of the 87A lips. This will go on the end of our panel. Place the lip under the top channels and align with the pre-punched holes. Fasten the lip to the sheet using three of the 10mm self-tapping screws. We're leaving out the screw at the top for now, as we'll need it free for a later stage. Repeat the process for the remaining lip at the other end of the sheet, aligning it under the channels. Fasten using three of the 10mm self-tapping screws, ensuring that the top hole is left free. This completes our roof panel. Repeat these steps to make the second panel. It's exactly the same as this one. Let's do the side panel assembly. We'll need one 81A channel, one 84R channel, one 84L channel, one 15A peak brace, one 36L sheet, one 38L sheet, one 38R sheet, and one 36R sheet. Lay out the sheets in the following order from left to right. 36L, 38L, 38R, and then the 36R sheet. Make sure that the bottom of the sheets are sitting flush and overlapped by one rib. Once orientated, secure the sheets together using 12 of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Take the 81A channel and attach it to the bottom of the sheets using the snap type method. Fasten two of the 10mm self tapping screws into the underside of the channel and into the CSJ.
To get good access with the tin snips, remove the topmost screw between the sheets, trim the way as shown, and then put the screw back in. Take the 84R channel and attach it to the right sheets using the snap tight method. Take the 84L channel and attach it to the top of the left sheets using the snap tight method. Next, we'll attach the 15A peak brace to the apex of the panel. Align it with the holes in the top of the two channels. Fasten using six of the 10mm self-tapping screws. This completes our side panel. You'll need to repeat these steps for the other side panel, which is exactly the same. Time to start the front panel assembly. To construct the front panel, we'll need 155A channel, 155C channel, 179A channel, two of the 89A jams, one 90A jam, and two of the 34A sheets. Position the two sheets with the gap in the middle which will form the doorway. Make sure that the edge of the sheets with the narrower pan is towards the inside. Take an 89A jam and place it over the inside edge of one of the sheets. Make sure that the holes align. Repeat this for the other 89A jam. Secure the two jams using four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Attach the 55A channel to the top of the sheets using the snap type method. The short side of the channel will need to face towards the outside of the sheets. Ensure the hole in the end of the jam aligns with the outer hole in the channel. Repeat the process for the other sheet, ensuring that the hole in the end of the jam aligns with the outer hole in the channel. Take the 90A jam and place it into the channel. The notches in the end of the jam will need to slide over the jams of the door frame. Once the jam is placed correctly, secure the channel at the end using three of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Repeat this process for the other end of the 90A jam, securing the channel with three of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Now use six of the 10mm self-tapping screws to further secure the jam to the channel, and then that channel to the CSJ. Use two of the 10mm self-tapping screws in the underside of the channel and the CSJ. Take the 55C channel and repeat this process, attaching it to the bottom of the sheets using the snap type method. Next, we'll take the 79A channel and place it so its long side is inside the bottom channel, as shown. 
Use three of the 10mm self-tapping screws to secure this channel. Move to the other side and use three more of the 10mm self-tapping screws to secure the channel. Now use five more of the 10mm self-tapping screws along the channel. Finally, put two more of the 10mm self-tapping screws in the underside of the channel and a CSJ. This completes our front panel assembly. Let's construct the left door panel. To make the left door panel, we'll need one 12A door plate, two pad bolts, two 58C channels, one 58A channel, two 91A jams, one 89C jam, and the door A sheet. To start, note the orientation of the sheet. The pre-punched holes for the door plate are on the right. Take the 89C jam and place it over the edge of the sheet, which has the holes for the door plate. Use two of the 10mm self-tapping screws to secure this jam to the sheet. Take the 58A channel and place it on the other side of the sheet. Make sure that the hinges can extend upwards towards the outside of the door. Use three of the 10mm self-tapping screws to fasten the channel to the sheet. Take the 58C channel and snap tight it onto the top of the sheet. This channel will go over the front of the existing channel and over the jam. Secure this jam with a 10mm self-tapping screw in each corner. Repeat this process for the other 58C channel, attaching it to the bottom of the sheet. Fasten with a 10mm self-tapping screw in each of the corners. Next, we'll attach the 12A door plate by placing it over the pre-punched holes midway up the door on the side of the sheet. Fix this door plate using six of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Now, flip the sheet over. Take one of the 91A jams and place it over the diagonal row of pre-punched holes, sliding one face into the corner of the panel. Fasten one 10mm self-tapping screw through the sheet and into the jam. Use another 10mm self-tapping screw to fasten the other end of the jam to the sheet. Now do the same for the other 91A jam, sliding it into the corner and lining it with the pre-punched holes. Secure the jam and the corner channels using two of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Use another 10mm self-tapping screw in the other end of the jam. We'll attach the pad bolts. For this, we'll need to use the supplied 4mm nuts and bolts. Place the pad bolt over the four pre-punched holes in the top of the sheet. From the underside of the sheet, push through the bolts and then finger tighten the nylock nuts. Now use pliers or a shifter to hold the nut and then use the drill to tighten up the bolts. Repeat this process for the other pad bolt at the bottom of the sheet, placing it over the holes and then using the four nuts and bolts. Now 
Flip the door back over and finish securing the jams using six of the 10mm self-tapping screws along the diagonal holes. This completes our left door panel. Let's construct the right door panel. To make the right door panel we'll need one 12A door plate, one pad bolt, one 58A channel, one 58B channel, two 58C channels, two 91A jams and the door B sheet. To start note the orientation of the sheet. We have our holes for the door plate on the left. Take the 58B channel and place it over the edge of the sheet which has the holes for the door plate. Use two of the 10mm self tapping screws to secure this channel to the sheet. Take the 58A channel and place it on the other side of the sheet, making sure that the hinges can extend upwards towards the outside of the door. Use three of the 10mm self-tapping screws to fasten this channel to the panel. Take the 58C channel and use the snap type method to attach it to the top of the sheet. This channel will go over the top of the sheet and over the front edges of the 58A and 58B channels. Use a 10mm self-tapping screw in each of the corners. Repeat this process for the other 58C channel, but on the bottom of the sheet. Again, using a 10mm self-tapping screw in each of the corners. Next, we'll attach the door plate and pad bolt. Position the door plate on the pre-punched holes midway up the sheet. Fasten it using a 10mm self-tapping screw. Next, take the pad bolt and position as shown. Fix using four of the 10mm self-tapping screws and finish off with a final 10mm self-tapping screw. Flip the door panel over. Take one of the 91A jams and place it over the diagonal row of pre-punched holes, sliding one face into the corner of the panel. Fasten one 10mm self-tapping screw through the sheet and into the jam. Use two 10mm self-tapping screws to secure the top corner channels. Use another 10mm self-tapping screw to fasten the other end of the jam to the sheet. Now do the same for the other 91A jam, sliding it into the corner and lining it with the pre-punched holes. Secure the end of the jam and two bottom corner channels using three 10mm self-tapping screws. Use another 10mm self-tapping screw in the other end of the jam. Flip the door back over and finish securing the braces with six of the 10mm self-tapping screws. This completes our right door panel assembly. Let's attach the doors. Lay out the front panel so you have access to the door hinge holes. Place the right door panel over the front panel so the hinges align with these holes. Use the 3mm drill bit to clear out the hinge holes at the top. Fasten the door using three of the pop rivets. Repeat this process for the bottom hinge, clearing out the holes then fastening with three more pop rivets. Place the left door panel over the front panel so the hinges align with the holes. Use the 3mm drill bit to clear out the hinge holes at the top. Fasten the door using three of the pop rivets. Repeat this process for the bottom hinge, 
clearing out the holes and fastening with three more pop rivets. Our doors are now attached. It's time for the final assembly. Stand up the rear panel. Get a friend to help you hold it. We're going to start by attaching the left side panel. Slide the top and bottom channels of the left side panel into the notches in the rear panel. Once the pre-punched holes are aligned, fasten using four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Repeat the process for the right side panel, making sure that the holes at the front are aligned. Once aligned, fasten the sheets together using four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Next, we'll attach the front panel. We recommend you get a friend to help you hold the panel in place. Align the front panel with the right panel, slotting the channels together and ensuring the holes align. Once aligned, fasten the two panels together using four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Repeat the process for the left side panel, aligning the front holes. Fasten the two panels using four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Attach the ridge beam to one of the roof panels. Make sure that you've got the roof panel so that the 60A channel slots into the ridge beam. You can identify the 60A channel because it has holes on the underside of the panel that will align with the ridge beam. Secure the ridge beam using four of the 10mm self-tapping screws into the holes in the 60A channel. Take the roof panel and place it over the shed. Make sure the lips are on the outside of the shed. At both ends of the ridge beam you'll find holes that'll line up with the peak braces on each wall. Fasten the end with one of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Fasten the other side of the ridge beam using another one of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Fasten the lip to the side panel using five of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Leave the hole near the ridge beam free. Do the same for the other side, fastening the lip with five of the 10mm self-tapping screws, making sure that you leave the hole near the ridge beam free. Secure the corners of the roof panel with two of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Finish securing the roof panel with six more of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Place the remaining roof panel on top of the shed, making sure you have the 60A channel towards the ridge beam. Again, making sure that the lips of the panel are overhanging the sidewalls. walls. 
slide the 60A side of the roof panel into the ridge beam. You'll need to work your way across the channel to get it in fully. making sure that the holes in the ridge beam align with the holes in the channel of the roof panel. Fasten the ridge beam with five more of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Fasten the lip to the side panel with five of the 10 mil self-tapping screws. Repeat for the other lip, fastening with five of the 10 mil self-tapping screws. Secure the corners of the roof panel with two of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Finish securing the roof with six of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Drill out and then fasten through both peak braces again. This will take two more of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Take the gable caps and fold as shown. Hook the bottom of the gable caps up under the two roof panels and then place over the ridge beam. Drill out through the holes in the gable cap and then fasten with two of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Use two more of the 10mm self-tapping screws to finish securing the lips to the side panel. Attach the remaining gable cap to the other side. Drill out the holes, then secure the cap and lips with four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. We'll attach the pad bolt hasps now. Place the hasp over the pad bolt shaft and drill out a hole. Secure the hasp with one of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Drill out the remaining hole and secure with another 10mm self-tapping screw. Do this again for the exterior pad bolt. Place the hasp over the pad bolt shaft. Drill out both holes and secure with two 10mm self-tapping screws. Now the shed is complete, any leftover holes can be finished off with a screw. Firstly position the shed onto the slab, making sure the walls are squared up and it's centered. 
Take your angled brackets and lay them out in the positions as shown, spacing them equally along each wall. Using these brackets as a template, go around and carefully mark where the holes are on the slab and on the wall. Drill 3mm pilot holes in the wall centered on these marks. Now switch out to the 10mm drill bit and drill through these pilot holes. Next, take your hammer drill and insert the 10mm masonry drill bit. Drill down through the marks we made earlier. Be sure to go down deep enough for the height of the dyna bolt. From the outside of the shed, take the 10mm bolt and poke it inside. You may need a friend to hold it there. Align the angle bracket with the bolt and then tighten the nut by hand. Tighten it further using the shifting spanner. Put the dyna bolt through the bracket and into the hole in the slab. Tighten this nut on the dyna bolt with the shifting spanner. Now that this has been done at all positions, the structure is anchored. Now the shed is complete, any leftover holes can be finished off with a screw.